Welcome back everyone for part two of lecture eight. So as I mentioned in part one, we're gonna switch gears a little bit and start to broach this topic of thermodynamics. And in this part, what we're gonna be doing is establishing our foundation and reviewing a couple of concepts we've covered in chemistry, because we're gonna be building off of that when we delve further into the thermodynamics piece of this class. And so for this, this part of lecture eight, we're gonna talk about the density of an ideal gas, Dalton's law of partial pressures, Amalgate's law, and a couple of equations of state and the purpose of those. All right, so for the ideal gas law, you've talked about it in chemistry one and two quite a bit. We know it's PV equals NRT. Now, as, I, as, as I've mentioned on this slide, we're looking to get a density. Now, as you may remember, a density requires us to have a mass per volume. So where are we getting that, in, that with our ideal gas law? Well, we're gonna to look to our moles to help us out with that. Now, as you remember, N is equal to the number of moles, but it also will equal your mass divided by the molecular weight of your chemical species. So what we can do is we can substitute that M over molecular weight into our ideal gas law so that we get PV equals M over molecular weight times RT. And now what we can do is we can rearrange this equation to bring the, the volume over to the right hand side. So we have mass over volume and we'll bring molecular weight over to the left. So we have pressure times molecular weight equals our mass per volume times RT. In which case we have our mass over volume that gives us our density. And now if we wanna fully isolate and just have density on one side, we would have density equals RT divided by pressure times molecular weight. Now, as we talked about before, you can have density, you can also have that inverse density, which is specific volume. And that's the same thing here with this ideal gas law, where for our ideal gas law, we can have something called specific molar volume, where instead of density, we're gonna have, uh, or rather we'll have PV equals NRT, but now we're gonna bring the, the moles over to the left-hand side, so we have V over N for our specific molar, molar volume. So that's the V hat is our specific molar volume. It's our volume divided by no, uh, the number of moles we have, giving us specific molar volume. Now, for our ideal gas, I, I think it's good for us just to remember what are these ideal gases. So an ideal gas is at a given T and P, ideal gases occupy the same volume no matter what the gas is. So at T equals zero degrees Celsius, the pressure is one ATM, and our volume would be 22.4 liters. Now also remember for our ideal gas, that's when you're operating at a very low pressure and a high temperature. And when that happens, we get to make a couple of assumptions, which I'm gonna mention what we assumed when we get to those equations of state. Now, when you deal with an ideal gas, there's a couple of abbreviations that are good to be familiar with. And so there's STP, which is our standard temperature, so that's T equals zero degrees Celsius, pressure is one ATM. There's also SCM, which is our standard cubic meters. So it's the meter cubed occupied by a gas at STP. And then we also have SCF, which is our standard cubic feet. And as you guessed, it's our feet cubed occupied by a gas at STP. So now that we've established this ideal gas law, we can now manipulate it a little bit and we're gonna now jump into Dalton's law of partial pressures. And it, Dalton's law says that each component in the mixture exerts its own pressure. And what ends up happening is that our total pressure is going to equal PA plus PB. So the partial pressure of A plus the partial pressure of B. So it's accounting for all the contributions from all your, chemi your, your chemical species. And so for us, with an ideal gas mixture, we would have P total times V equals N total RT. But now we can also apply that idea in Dalton's law of partial pressures for a single component. And so for a single component, we would have, let's say for component A, PA times V equals NA RT. So that partial pressure of A is directly correlated to the number of moles of A we have. Now, when you divide the PA by P total, you can get a mole fraction. So if we took that ideal gas law for species A, we divided it, divided it by the total ideal gas law for our whole uh, system, 
we would now be able to cancel out a lot of our terms. When we would have PA over P total equals NA over N total, which is really our mole fraction for A. And so if we rearrange this, we can have PA equals YA times P. And I'm just making a little note that I'm cutting off the total subscript and just saying P is really P total. And if you rearrange this, you can get, or if you now take that, apply it also to the partial pressure of B, you can get PA plus PB will equal YA plus YB times P. And that really just equals P because in this case, YA plus YB would equal one. All right, and you know, that, that's something that can be very convenient. If you know the partial pressures, you can then figure out what the molar composition of your system is, as long as it's an ideal gas. And now we're gonna do something very similar for Amalgat's law. And in this case, in Amalgat's law, each component contributes to part of the volume for a gas. So this time around, instead of pressure, it's volume, but it's a very similar idea. So our total volume is going to equal the volume contributed by A and plus the volume contributed by B. So for an ideal gas, our P total times V total equals N total times RT. PV equals NRT, same deal. And again, if we focus just on one of our species, we would have P total times the VA contribution, but volume contribution by A equals number of moles of A times RT. And in both of those cases, I can manipulate this equation to be V equals NRT over P. And so now if I took the specific volume, the not the specific volume, just the volume contribution of A and the equation associated with it, divided it by the total volume and the uh, associated components, we would have this setup. And in this case, we can simplify it down and we can get VA over V total equals YA, the molar composition of Y, or molar composition of A. And so, again, you see that you can now, again, if you have an ideal gas and you have volumes or you have pressure, partial pressures, you can use those to get your molar composition. Thanks to Dalton and Amalgad. You should thank them sometime. They help, this is gonna be a big help. <laughs> okay, and so now, we, would do, we made a lot of assumptions when we use an ideal gas, but some of the times you can't assume an ideal gas, and that's where our equations of state are going to come into play. So you have, for example, the van der Waals equation of state, which in this case is going to assume non-ideality. All right, now in, in van der Waals' equation of state, instead of, our, it's modifying our ideal gas law. So in this case, Van der Waals' equation of state is gonna be P equals RT divided by the specific volume minus B minus A over specific volume squared, where A and B are coefficients dependent on whatever chemical species you're working with. And these are to account for two of the items that we assumed were not present with an ideal gas. And so the first assumption that we were making was that every gas molecule contributes minimally to the total volume of your system, and so it has a negligible volume. And in this case, Van der Waals' equation of state is going to correct for that. Similarly, or, and in addition to that, we also are going to no longer make this assumption that your intramolecular forces are non-existent. And that's what that second term, A over V, V hat squared is accounting for, is those intramolecular forces. So now, in addition to your gases taking up a little bit of space, they also are being accounted for their interactions with all other gases. Now, when you had a, a ideal gas, you had a system where it's low pressure, high temperature, your gas has so much energy and it's taking and it's moving around in a lot of space that those are fine assumptions. They have very minimal contributions. But when you apply a very high pressure and you lower the temperature enough, those assumptions no longer are true because you're gonna be in a much more confined space. So the volume of gas takes up and those intermolecular forces will actually make a difference on your, on your pressure. Now, another, and another, another equation of state that you might see because there's, there's a ton of equations of state, but this is another one that's pretty common. is a Soav-Redlich-Quang equation of state. 
And so this is another one with a different form, but similar idea. It's trying to correct for both your volume and intermolecular force contributions. And as you see, it's not that different from Van der Waals equation, uh, the Van der Waals equation of state. And again, you got this volume correction term and you have an intermolecular force correction term, right? And so rather Kwong is just trying to do additional stuff for correcting. And now just to wrap up, we've gone over how to get the density of an ideal gas. We talked about Dalton and Amalgate's laws, and we went into some equations of state and the purpose of them. That's going to wrap up for lecture eight. Have a wonderful day, and I'll see you soon.